WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has made his name and plenty of enemies by publishing military and other highly sensitive secrets of multiple governments around the world. As a consequence, he currently calls a maximum security jail in England home while he fights a bitter battle with the Trump administration, which wants him extradited to the United States. Before prison, the controversial and now very frail Australian spent seven years holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. And it's there where Assange helped conceive his own top secrets, two sons, with his, until now, equally secretive fiance, Stella Morris. Stella, you have been Julian Assange's great secret, perhaps his best surprise yet. Yeah. It's quite something that one of the most surveilled people on the planet managed to carve out space for a family and partner. Yeah, it wasn't easy, but if you're with someone you love, you can, you can make impossible situations possible. 37-year-old Stella Morris and 48-year-old Julian Assange consider their love affair an act of rebellion. That at a time when Julian was confined to London's Ecuadorian embassy after seeking asylum there, when almost every other freedom was denied to him, they still found each other. It was tolerable because we were able to create a, a haven, a private oasis, and to create life. And with life, there's hope. What are we gonna do later? And this is the life they created. <gasps> Three-year-old Gabriel and 14-month-old Max. We do have these two little boys who are wonderful and, you know, there's a future for, for our family together. Study. Until COVID hit, Stella would take her sons to see their father in prison. Hi. We're shooting. For the last 10 weeks, their only contact has been over the phone, when Julian can manage to call, as he does now. Sweetie, Daddy wants to say hello. Hello, Daddy. It's an adorable connection between Dad and son. What, what are you doing there? I'm eating. You're eating? What, a banana? In April last year, Julian Assange's seven-year odyssey in the Ecuadorian embassy came to a shocking end. Assange's political asylum was revoked, and in an unprecedented move, in any embassy anywhere, London police were invited in to arrest him. We knew it was coming, but I never thought it would be as brutal and as brazen as that. I'm still processing it. None of this is normal to anyone. What very few knew was that with his eviction and arrest, Julian Assange was leaving behind two young children and a long-term loving partner. When I first met him, I felt so fortunate. I was able to meet this person who had changed the world, really, um, with WikiLeaks. If you get this material, give it to us, no questions asked, and you will help change history. In 2010... Shut it down! Shut it down! Julian Assange and WikiLeaks hit the headlines with the release of three quarters of a million highly classified military documents and videos. Iraq was a bloodbath on every corner. Come on, fire! Not long after, a starstruck Stella joined Team Assange. It was a game changer and everything was possible. Stella was an accomplished legal researcher, earning her credentials with the UN. The long struggle for justice for me and others continues. A year later, Assange sought and was granted political asylum in London's Ecuadorian embassy. He could have visitors, but would be arrested if he stepped onto the streets. My work will not be cowed. It was perhaps an unlikely love nest, but by 2015, Julian and Stella were in love. And by 2017, they were secretly engaged. What tipped you from friendship to lovers? We grew closer and 
you know, became friends and watched movies together and and I just loved spending time with him. It was very romantic and cautious and um, very sweet. If you could choose who you love and how you love, is this a choice you would have made? Yes. <laughs> would I change anything? Yes, of course. We would have the freedoms that everyone else has, the romantic dinners in a restaurant and strolling by the beach. But you can still have a lot of that in a tiny room in the embassy. It's romantic anyway. Who is this beautiful baby? Max. No, it's you. Gabriel is blissfully unaware of the dire predicament of his father. Assange is being held in a maximum security prison in London, fighting extradition to the US. If he loses and is convicted of the 17 espionage charges brought against him, he could be sentenced to 175 years in jail. Papa and no book. Study and, and you and game. It must have been a huge decision to bring children into this risky, scary existence. Yeah, but, you know, love conquers all. And to begin with, it was, you know, it would be wonderful to start a family, but obviously we can't have that. But then we thought, actually, you know what? We should start a family because it made sense. We loved each other and we wanted to start a family. And all these other circumstances would change, but that was, um, that was a certainty, so I got pregnant and we were over the moon. It was an extraordinarily well-kept secret, given the confined size of the embassy and the prying eyes within its walls. Now I have to ask you a deeply personal question, Stella, but how, how do you get pregnant in an embassy where you're keeping your relationship secret? from the very people who are watching you. Julian had some private spaces. His bedroom was private and his office was private. Um, so there were no cameras there. I got pregnant twice while he was in the embassy. And I guess I just, um, you know, piled on layers and, and complained about getting fat. Um, but yes, he, he had his private spaces and that's all one needs to have a relationship. Did it put a lot of pressure on you though? Or did you feel like you were being watched all the time? Yes, but you learn to manage these things. So when I got pregnant the first time, um, you know, there were microphones everywhere. So I had to write it down on a piece of paper to tell him. Apart from their love, there was nothing conventional about their relationship. Stella never lived in the embassy, and so childbirth and child-rearing was very much a solitary affair. By falling in love with Julian, you took on many burdens. I mean, you're a, a person who had her babies without, without him by your side. I mean, you did that on your own. You took on so much. Did you know that that's what you would be facing? Julian was by my side on the phone when I had um, both Max and Gabriel, and that was an incredible salve, even through childbirth. I think it was the strongest painkiller, but of course, you know, I've been deprived of having him hold my hand while I was giving birth. When you decided to start a family, did you consider that in doing so that you may lead an existence where Julian doesn't see his children grow up? I don't want our lives to be determined by an incredible injustice. I have the certainty of his love and he has the certainty of my love and we have an incredibly strong bond. And we have two children who love their father and that's what matters. For many though, it's not as clear cut. Sweden issued a warrant for the arrest of Julian Assange. When Assange sought asylum in the embassy in 2012, he was on bail, wanted for questioning in Sweden over allegations of sexual misconduct, allegations that even his supporters 
like Federal Independent MP Andrew Wilkie, concede smeared his reputation. It's fair to say that his efforts to not be extradited to Sweden has coloured the perception of him by some people. That's entirely understandable. Um, please understand, he was never charged, he was never convicted, the matters have been dropped by Swedish authorities, and we now have records that show clearly that British officials were aware Sweden was always about getting him to the United States. Assange has always maintained he is innocent of the sex allegations. He's now served the 12-month sentence for breaching his bail, but remains behind bars on remand as he fights extradition, a man stricken by his predicament. He's very unwell, and I'm, I'm very concerned for his ability to survive this. And now he's in the UK's worst prison, Belmarsh Prison, which they nickname it Britain's Guantanamo Bay. It's a high security prison. One in five prisoners are murderers. He shouldn't be there. He's not, he's not a criminal. He's not a dangerous person. He's a gentle intellectual, a thinker and a journalist. And those people are not the people who belong in prison. Coming up. It was mainly a security concern. The decoy dad. Hello, I'm Stephen. Julian and Stella used. These instructions were coming from the United States. To fool the CIA. It's almost too crazy to be real. And how the spooks fought back. Gabriel was targeted to steal his DNA. That's next on 60 Minutes. Stella Morris is a woman in love. <gasps> Look! What is that? A bird. It's a kookaburra. With her two young children, Gabriel and Max, and their father, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, behind bars in an East London maximum security jail as he fights extradition to the US. The isolation made even more chronic by the COVID pandemic. Hi, Julian. We're doing a, a story time. I saw him on the Sunday before lockdown started and we've been able to speak every day, but I'm very worried. If you're separated from your family and you're alone in a room, a tiny dark room for 23 hours a day um, with no control over your surroundings, I think people can imagine what that's like. I think most people would say that they'd probably go mad in that situation. Is that what you feared? Well, I think any person would get very severely depressed, and he is very depressed. But we just got the package yesterday, so... I'm this is a desperate plea to help Julian, made by a woman loath to expose herself or her children to the public. For the last five years, her love affair with Julian has been a secret born out of fear. Why was it so important to keep it secret? The real issue was that I thought that, um, that our family would be targeted uh, by the same people that were trying to harm Julian. In an elaborate cover, Julian and Stella recruited close friend, British actor Stephen Hu. Hello, I'm Stephen. I identify myself as gay and this is what I'm going to talk about today. In what might be considered his most important role yet, Stephen played the part of doting dad on his many visits to Julian in the embassy. But the child he carried with him was baby Gabriel, and Julian, not Stephen, was his father. It was mainly a security concern, and that's why we went to extreme measures of trying to not expose my pregnancy, bringing in Gabriel to the embassy with a friend who would pose as, as the father, just so that Julian would be able to see his son regularly. You don't take these steps lightly. You only do this if you think that there's a very serious security risk. To hide that she was the baby's mother, Stella would arrive and leave the embassy separately to Stephen. Even so, security staff were dubious. To unmask the suspected ruse, 
they investigated Stephen and put together a dossier of their findings. They also concocted what Stella considers a reprehensible plan. Our eldest, Gabriel, was, was targeted by the security company in the embassy. They had instructions to steal his DNA in order to establish that Julian was the father in a bid to hurt Julian. Whistleblowers from the embassy's security firm warned Stella they'd been ordered to steal Gabriel's DNA by collecting his nappy and dummy. They came forward and they spoke to our lawyers and they exposed what had been going on there because they had played a part in it. And they said that what their boss had been telling them is that they were working for the CIA and that those instructions about getting Gabriel's DNA, that was coming from the other side of the Atlantic. These instructions were coming from the United States. This guy's a traitor. Sleazeball named Julian Assange. I think Assange should be assassinated, actually. But the pursuit and persecution of Julian Assange got even dirtier, according to Stella. Cameras recorded both video and audio. Of the, the allegation is the CIA was spying on Assange while he was in the embassy, an accusation that is currently before the Spanish High Court. It's heard that recordings of Assange's privileged conversations with his lawyers, even his doctors, were being sent back to America to bolster their pending extradition case against Assange. Worse, according to the security firm Whistleblowers, there was canvassing of plots to forcibly remove Assange and have him killed. It reads like some really terrible spy novel. Plots to kidnap, plots to possibly poison Julian Assange while he was in the embassy. I mean, it's almost too crazy to be real. And it is real. It's hard for people to understand that such lawlessness is possible. So there's incredible criminality that has been going on in order to gather information about Julian's lawyers and his family and journalists who were visiting him. I mean, it's shocking and I'm very fearful. I've been in a permanent state of fear for years and now it's slowly playing out. Coming up. Closer to him, I think, than a lot of people. Help from famous friends. Was Pamela Anderson part of your cover? Words from prison. I'm just here with the birthday boy. Hello, sweetie. There's a lot about Julian that people don't know. And a simple plea for help. It's a nightmare and it has to stop. I need Julian and he needs me. That's next on 60 Minutes. Julian Assange returns to the UK courts in early September, where his extradition trial continues, and no doubt his supporters will be in tow. The stakes are high. If he loses the case, he could eventually face trial in what's commonly known as the Espionage Court in the US. It's a military court where no one charged with similar offences has ever got off. A prospect that paralyzes Julian's fiance Stella Morris with dread. If Australia doesn't step in, I'm very fearful that this wrong won't be righted. Practically, what would you like Australia to do? What can Australia do? It's a nightmare and it has to stop. Not because um, he has to be treated differently, but because he has to be treated the same as everyone else. He has rights. I hope many people would agree, when an Australian uh, is overseas and in strife, uh, there is at least a moral obligation on the Australian government uh, to come to their aid, whereas in this case, the Australian government has basically hung Julian Assange out to dry, um, being more interested, I think, in kowtowing to Washington, uh, as is the case with the British government. Iraq does not pose a serious enough security threat to the US. One of the most stupid and dangerous US presidents in living memory. Federal Independent MP Andrew Wilkie is a former military intelligence officer turned Iraqi war whistleblower. It's bad policy, dumb policy. Mr Wilkie is paying a high price for speaking out. So better than most, he knows what it's like to be reviled as a traitor to be thought of as a rat in the ranks. To him, Assange is a hero, not a villain. 
Obviously, the United States argues that this is a crime, that, that Julian Assange broke espionage laws and, that's, and that he must face justice. The allegation of espionage is complete and utter nonsense. The substantive issue is that Julian Assange revealed hard evidence of US war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan, of the inhumane treatment of detainees at Guantanamo Bay. That's the substantive issue. Picture this, you know, we've got one lone Australian sitting in his cell in Belmarsh High Security Prison up against the might of the United States military, intelligence and legal systems. There's nothing fair about that when all he did was the right thing. Do you believe in doing what you describe as the right thing, that Julian Assange made mistakes, that he put people's lives at risk? The allegation is made that he dumped a whole lot of material and he endangered people. The fact is there is no evidence of anyone getting hurt. Julian Assange has attracted many high-profile supporters, including actor-turned-activist Pamela Anderson. She visited Julian many times at the embassy, and while there, it's alleged her mobile phone passcode was stolen and her meetings with Assange recorded, becoming an unwitting participant in the spy game being played against Assange by the US. Of all his friends, the glamorous Anderson probably caused the greatest stir, in part by her own flirtation with the media. I feel very close to him and I feel closer to him, I think, than a lot of people have gotten to him. He trusts me. Nothing physical. Yes, it's a friendship. What if he wasn't in the embassy? Who knows? At the very time of this chat with Liam in 2018, Julian and Stella had started their secret family. Was Pamela Anderson part of your cover? I wouldn't put it like that. Um, Julian and her are good friends, and uh, she's been an incredible advocate for, for Julian, and I'm very grateful. And it did give you some cover, I'd imagine. I mean, you know, while the tabloids are going crazy about Pamela Anderson, the real love affair is going on without them knowing about it. Yeah, um, I think it came as a shock to many, but there's a lot about Julian that people don't know. I'm just here with the birthday boy. Hello, sweetie. I made him my present. What did you get? Present. Even with Julian behind bars, Stella is determined her boys will know and love their father. A happy birthday cake. A happy birthday cake. Happy birthday cake. Did, did it have candles? But Stella really hopes these precious morsels of their everyday life will sustain Julian Assange, enable him to survive what she fears he won't. I think he old. Three years old. He'll be coming a big boy. Come here. I will come. I will come. I want people to understand that we're being punished as a family. It's not just Julian in the prison. It's the kids that are being deprived of their father. It's me that's being deprived. I need Julian, you know, and he needs me. And um, I'd like to ask Scott Morrison to do everything he can to get Julian back to his family. We asked the Prime Minister about Stella's plea for help, but he, the Foreign Minister, and the Attorney General didn't want to be interviewed. In a statement, the government says our High Commission in London has written to Julian Assange multiple times, offering consular assistance, but it's an offer he's so far ignored. You can read the full statement on our website. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.